Alina is going to be talking to last year's Tough as Nails champion Murph coming up later. But first, we are getting the inside scoop on tonight's episode from host Phil Kogan. So we want to welcome him to today's show. Yeah, welcome, Phil. Thank you for having me. Challenges take you to the top of the highest peak in Los Angeles. That's on this coming episode. Tell me what what can we expect? I watched the last episode and you've got some tough people on there this time around. Yeah, I, I, I look at that cast, that lineup, and you hear the different jobs that they all do and whether and it was great to have Murph back, of course, our season one winner down there in Camp Pendleton. Uh, shout out to everybody, all the Marines down there for allowing us to do our premiere episode there and allowing us to jump in the middle of a big military operation. Uh, Tough as Nails is a celebration of the, 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 the best of the best in their chosen trades. We've got people from all trades from as far away as Hawaii, all the way to the far side of the country over on the East Coast and everywhere in between. Complete strangers that come together to compete to find out who is the toughest of them all. But of course, what makes Tough as Nails different is that in addition to an individual competition and finding out who's the toughest of them all, we also have a team competition. So everybody goes home with something. They have a chance to earn money uh, and go home with money in their pocket. That was sort of a huge part of what we think makes Tough as Nails different is that we didn't want to just cut somebody out of the competition and say, all right, thank you, bye, <laughs> you're gone. Um, there's opportunities for redemption on Tough as Nails because you get cut from the individual, but then you're there for your team. Two teams of six competing against each other. And most people come from working in a team environment, whether they're on a farm or they're working as a union worker, as an iron worker, they're used to working on teams. So I, I love that aspect of the show, watching what happens when people come together to get the job done. For sure, it's definitely a different element than we see on a lot of reality TV. And and on that same line, the contestants are different than what we're used to seeing. A lot yeah. of times we talk about these reality stars that maybe have already made a name for themselves or celebrities, but this is unlike any other competition show. These are kind of the workers that a lot of people would say, hey, that's like me or that's like somebody I know. Yes. So what can people learn from that when they're watching uh, the episode tonight? Well, I think that's really perceptive of you. And that's sort of a key thing for us. Uh, so many shows are about, we're gonna make you a star. You're gonna become rich. You're gonna become an influencer. You're, uh, your your life is gonna change and turn upside down. You're gonna be discovered. These are people who have maybe their third generation drywaller or they're a fourth generation farmer or they've just left the military and they're getting into uh, becoming an iron worker. These are people who take tremendous pride in their job and they're happy with their job. They love their craft. They want to become masters of their trades and um, and have incredible life skills. And I, so I think it's a real celebration of the hardworking men and women who really make the country work, who make sure that the, that light in the background there is on and that roads are smooth and that um, th that the toilets flush and things work and things function. And they take tremendous pride in that. And I think for too long, we've kind of seen some of these trade jobs as less than other jobs in our society. I certainly want my dentist to have gone to dental school to know what he's doing or she's doing when they <laughs> drill my teeth. But I also want someone who's making a weld on something, on some metal on a walkway that I'm on, make sure that that weld holds mm -hmm. so that uh, I, my life's not at risk. And so it's about celebrating, yes, real people in real life who are who are real tough. And I think for too long, we've kind of looked down on those jobs like they're less than uh, the person who spent seven years going to get a dental degree, for instance. We need both. We need both. Phil, you are three seasons in and we have some tough ladies this time around. You have some firefighters, yeah. women who've been in the military. No woman has ever won the season mm -hmm. yet. So what are you thinking about the ladies' chances this time around? Well, listen, every single season we've had women who are super competitive and it was very important for us to have men and women competing equally. We didn't want to have a men's division and a women's division because tough is not measured by you know what sex you are. Tough is about strength, endurance, agility, life skills, what people can do with their hands, and then that mental toughness. And, you know, I have a daughter um, uh, who's 25. She's growing up in a different era from the era that my wife grew up in, for instance, where women are more accepted. We still have a lot of change to go there with acceptance of any difference, quite frankly. But um, I think our show uh, is, is a perfect platform for young boys and girls to look at these men and women who are the best of the best in their chosen trade and say, this is not about 
how old you are, what sex you are, what color you are, what background you are, what you do. Uh, tough can be measured by those attributes that I that I mentioned. It can come in different shapes and sizes, um, and that you should never judge a book by its cover. We've proven that, and yes, the women who are on our uh, on our cast incredibly tough. We have a, a a physical test that people do to get on the show, and uh, one of the women on our show got the highest score out of the twelve. Wow. Uh, I won't tell you who it is, <laughs> but uh, they they absolutely annihilated everybody else with this uh, test. It's called the brutal truth. It's it's a burpee push up test, and so yes. Um, yeah, I think that's part of what the show's about is full of surprises. Very, very cool. Setting the bar high there. And we don't have much time left, but before we go, we mentioned we're going to be talking with season one champ Murph in just a bit. Any message you want us to pass along to him? Murph has proven to be a wonderful spokesperson for what it means to be tough as nails. A very gracious man who's served this country for over 20 years in the military. Um, I think he... he he epitomizes what it is we're trying to get across with tough as nails. Um, that the idea of honor and teamwork and um, doing your best, but you know, not making any excuses. He's a, a, a worthy winner um, and, and a great spokesperson for what tough as nails is all about. So yeah, I guess the only thing I'd want you to do is just, you know, say Phil said to say thank you for being a great, a great winner on Tough as Nails and continuing to share the message of what Tough as Nails is all about. Perfect. Well, good luck the rest of the season. Congrats on the success it's had so far. We are looking forward to watching. We thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you for your time. All right. All new Tough as Nails airing tonight at 8 o'clock right here on KCTV5. We hope you join us then. And before that, it is an all new episode of Survivor.